So one aspect of being a realtor that a lot of people don't really think about is once you become a realtor, all of your contact information becomes public, right? I mean, that's a good thing. You want people to be able to reach out to you, to be able to find you easily. Um, however, that does start cha making changes to your lifestyle that if you are not used to having your information out in a public place, can be a little bit unsettling. Now, this also goes doubly so um, if you are a woman because again, you have to take steps to protect yourself because again, your number is gonna be public and as is your contact information and a lot of people are you know, becoming uh, realtors are using social media, taking pictures, that kind of stuff. So you wanna be very, very careful about you know, how you structure your information, how, it, how easy you make it for people to find you online. Um, so, and that also goes uh, as well as um, you know, just safety. You know, there are instances for both women and men, and actually a lot of the incidents recently have been men uh, that are targeted, where people, you know, show up and, you know, request that a property get shown, right? No real relationship, things like that. And then they just, uh, and then that's where these incidents that you hear about on the news end up happening because, you know, you, realtors who are always looking for business end up going out, meeting with the stranger sight unseen, not taking the proper safety precautions and end up you know, either in harm or worse. Now, beyond that though, uh, the topic of this video, I wanted to talk a little bit more about um, just the, the calls and the prospecting because you will get prospected as a realtor, uh, which is something that not very many people prepare newer agents for. So, uh, first of all, I, re I highly, highly recommend getting some sort of second number, right? Most people don't have the option to buy a second phone. However, you can just get a second phone number. Uh, that way you're not giving away your actual cell phone number that all your friends and family are calling. And that will also give you the option of being able to, you know, filter out the calls, things like that. So you have a clear business versus um, personal line. And that'll actually really, really make things a lot easier, just, you know, first and foremost. Second of all, have another email address that uh, people can contact you other than your you know, email address that you made back in high school that's a little bit embarrassing but good enough, right? You wanna have something that is real estate related so it is kept separate uh, so that it doesn't co intermingle and that you know, as people start reaching out to you that it doesn't just overwhelm you. It will save you uh, a ton of sanity points and thousands of dollars in therapy. <laughs> okay, now in terms of prospecting, you will start getting calls. Uh, right when you pass the exam, you'll have um, Brokerage is actually reaching out to you, prospecting you via email, by text, by phone, uh, reaching out to you because they want your business. If you're, you know, everybody who passes the exam intends on probably making money in real estate at some point. So they want you in so that they can get their cut, whether it's through fees or commission splits and things like that. So be prepared for that. Now, beyond that, you'll also have other services like, um, you know, registries, um, you know, uh, online lead generation sites, marketing sites, all this type of stuff. Plenty of places who will call you um, saying that, hey, look, if you just get one transaction out of what we do, then it'll pay for a year or two years of our service, whatever it is that you might be. Be wary. It doesn't mean that every single one of them is scam. Uh, a lot of them are probably perfectly legitimate forms of business, but it doesn't necessarily mean that it's the right business for you, no matter how exciting it sounds. So you really need to be firm about what your sources of lead generation are before you start pushing forward and making a decision like that. So just things to think about, just food for thought. Um, also be aware of scams if they're too eager to make an appointment, if they're too eager just to kind of get everything going. You know, just in my experience, unless somebody already has a relationship with you, most buyers and sellers are fairly cautious people. They're not just gonna give you a call and say, hey, um, I'm ready, just, you know, we don't have any relationship, but I'm ready to have you sell the, the largest financial asset of my, you know, of my life. So just kind of be on the lookout, be wary, um, just be cautious and, you know, you hear the phrase, if it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. So keep that in mind. Uh, that is very, very much the case. So thank you so much for watching this video. It's just a quick thing. I'm going to try and come out with a few more videos because people have been responding uh, quite a bit to a lot of the videos that I've put up in the past on the YouTube channel. So thanks so much, guys. Take care.